Hello everyone and welcome to Allen Tech. Today um, going to be like an Eric the Car Guy kind of video where I'm going to be doing some work in a church. Um, we've got a projector that needs a bulb change, maybe two projectors that need to be switched either ends, and also a bent pin and a VGA cable and some software work to get some um, song lyrics put up at both these projectors. So. Yeah, it's going to be some interesting day. Just bringing you all along with the call. This is an on-the-side call, not from my normal job at the school. Doing it for a co-worker, essentially, who works with the church. So, let's get to it. Okay, so first off, I guess I'm going to get the easy stuff out of the way. We're going to do the bulb, which this is an Espen bulb for an Espen projector. I don't know if y'all can actually see that up there. Woo, there we go. Yep, that's the Espen projector. I'll be zoomed in. There's actually the back corner of that is where I'll be changing the bulb at. So, um, I'll be zoomed into it. One step I probably won't show is that there's a screw in the back. It's pretty self-explanatory on these Esprit projectors. A lot of them are the same way. There's just a screw on the back that you take off, reveals a plate which has the bulb in it. There's usually two to three screws. Um, this one's actually a similar bulb to what we use at the school. So this should be fairly easy. It just has, um, I believe, three screws that you have to get in. One, two, it just be two. I oh, know it's just two. So there's just two screws that we have to undo, easily pull the other bulb out, and then put this one in, do the two screws, and you're done. The one thing you do have to make sure is on these, do not touch the front of the bulb, period. You don't want to touch any part of that because the oils on your hand will make a hot spot on these bulbs and burn them out faster. So that's something that they don't tell you. And um, these kind of generic bulbs that come in these kind of box, they really don't have any instructions with them. So you're just kind of doing them. But yeah, there's a bulb right there. You do not want to touch the front of that, make a hot spot. And another thing on these, whenever you're putting them in, these two prongs, sometimes, especially if you're using one, uh, manufacturers will take these carriers and reuse them a lot and just change out this bulb. So these might actually wiggle. I've actually had this happen in a Toshiba projector. Um, this one actually feels like an original, brand new one. I don't see any kind of dust or anything that would indicate that it's been reused. So this might be a brand new one. So but make sure that those prongs get in and they don't get sideways because if they get sideways on you once, it's not fun to do it again. So I'm gonna get up there, start putting this in and I'll see y'all in a minute. Okay, so I got y'all zoomed in quite a bit, and my hands will probably be in the way for some of this. And I do apologize for the terrible camera audio, but I don't have a lapel mic yet, so. Um, like I said before, there's a screw right here in the back, and you'll just need a regular old Phillips head screwdriver. Sorry, it's a little blurry. And we'll take this back plate off. Be a little careful with this one because it is quite wobbly. So, usually in these, the screw stays with the plate, and in this one, it does. So, now we have the bulb in view, and I don't know how well that's going to show. Actually, I think one of the screws is showing up. Uh, it's just a little silver part. But right over here is a screw, and right in here is a screw, and they've actually kind of left you little pathways to get to them. So, I have to get in y'all's way very quick, and once again, just a little Phillips head screwdriver. 
if they were put in correctly, they should just kind of fall. They shouldn't fall out. keep a little upwards pressure anyway. And then in Espen, they've been pretty nice and they put these little handles right here that you can put your fingers on and just gently wiggle it out. Now maybe I didn't do one of the screws enough. quite a while. Yep. Got the back on that. I don't know if it's going to zoom in or not. Yeah, you got a little crackage in the ceramic back there. So that one's been in there quite a while. Cool. I'll put our other one back in plastic right quick. So I didn't accidentally touch it on the way up. I'm actually going to use a can of air in this one too to blow it out after um, this. But I won't show that on camera because everybody knows how to use a can of air, I hope. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get this one in. Make sure we line up our power cord. And it should go in there fairly easily and just like a little bit of a click. You may have heard that on the camera, it's just like a tiny little click. And then you lightly screw in the new screws. And you just want them kind of snug. So like I said, it's kind of clicked in there, so there's no reason to hammer down on these things. By the way, this is a Powerlite 7.6C which will be in the description, maybe even in the title. So, if you're curious how to change the bulb on one of those, and a lot of aspens in general, that's what it's gonna be. So now I'm gonna get my plate again, make sure it's clean with some dust. Put that back on. Use the screwdriver, and screw it back on. And now the bulb's changed. So. Cool. And that's how you change the bulb. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention why I have this here with me is that these do contain HG, which is mercury, and they're really not a good thing to throw away in your average trash. Um, a lot of computer recyclers might take these, and you can always call your local landfill, find out what to do with them. They might have a place. Yes, I know it's a lot of work, but it does help people later on in the long run. No, I don't consider myself a tree hugger by any means. I just want to be nice to people because imagine this getting into some underground water or something. You wouldn't want to drink that. So just make sure you dispose of these properly, all right? So, thank you. So this is probably going to be the rest of my day because that bulb was a pretty quick thing to change. But um, this is the bent pin VGA cable. And unfortunately, this is not a little six foot VGA. This is not a little 10 foot VGA. This is a 30 foot VGA and they're a little more expensive and it might be worth it to actually try to repair it instead of replace it. So it just has, I don't know if y'all can see it. Oh yeah, it's pretty visible. Yeah, it has a bent pin. It's 
kind of right there. And then it's pretty darn bent, and it's actually between two other pins. So I have to try and bend that up. It looks like it's just a straight bend. So hopefully we can bend it back straight. Oh, we have another bit pin closer to the bottom too. I didn't notice that one. Kind of like right over here is another bent pin. So we have two bent pins on this one. So I'm gonna give it 30 minutes, an hour maybe, trying to bend it back. Hopefully it won't take that long, but. And hopefully we can save this VGA cable because not only is the VGA cable a problem, it's also ran all the way up there to another projector in the back, which I don't know if you can see, but can y'all see? Yeah, projector right kind of there, about right there. So it'd be nice not to have, ooh, camera's kind of way to here. So it'd be nice not to have to do all of that over again because this one would have to come out. You can't just put a new end on them. So, yep, that's what I'm fixing to do and we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, so what I have here is a little screwdriver with a little Phillips head, which is nice for getting in between these pins. I also have some other heads that I could use. Whoops. Where are we at? There you are. And I would really recommend if you're going to get into any kind of tech. Um, these little screwdrivers. I got this one for $5 at Walmart and it came with um, 24 different ends. One of which, two of which actually are tri-wings which are great for MacBooks and a bunch of different stars for little cell phones and stuff. They're really useful. $5 of um, had it for about two years now and it's just now kind of starting to wear on the ends of these so um, the lighting is terrible in here but I guess we're gonna start with the easy one first we're just gonna try to slowly pull it forward back into where it needs to be and I'm sorry I can't see too much of this I want to be very careful because we do not want to mess up the other pins. So it looks like that one's about where it needs to be. So now we'll try to start working on the other one. And this other one, I'm almost certainly going to have to kind of bend some of the other ones because of the way that it bent in. But we'll try to bend them back afterwards. And you don't want to bend these too fast because if you bend them too fast they will break on you because they're just little pieces of copper essentially. Little gold plated copper. Uh, this one actually I don't even think is gold plated. But you just try to bring that one forward. Ah, uh, it's like stuck between two. This is why I like using the Phillips head on this one because it has a little groove in it. So it makes it a little bit easier than say a flat head to get and grab that. But this one is darn sure in there. This one's wiggling on me pretty bad. I'm afraid it's going to break on me. Come on. But you'll get the idea of this, so I'm going to turn the camera off and fiddle with this so that I can curse and scream at it some while I'm doing it. So, I will see y'all back if I get it figured out. Okay, so I've been sitting here messing with this for a little bit, and I think we've gotten it. If I can get my poor camera to focus, I think we've gotten it pretty close. So I'm going to try this, and especially after you've done pins, do not just jam this on to the connector that you want it to go on to because you risk starting over at square one. So, whoop, wrong way. Let me get my little connector over 
in here. Off of our laptop. The laptop on the floor. So we've got our connector here. I just want to see if it goes on easily. No, well, it looks and felt like it went in pretty easily. Take it out and make sure. Yeah, it did. Good. Didn't rebend pins, so we are good to go. Cool. So I'm going to tighten this up and we'll fire up some projectors and we'll fire up some software and see what we get. So. See you all in a minute. Well, despite our pen being bent back into the right place, it did not work, unfortunately. Um, that is the projector back there that should be working, an HP projector that would work off of that wire right there, coming down to our computer at the moment. So, Unfortunately, that is not working, but we did get the front projector to work, the one that we changed the bulb in. And also, I got their presenter software set up and ready to go, so they have the presenter mode there, and their songs up there. So I'm hoping that will get them somewhere started. I will probably be back to help with that projector. I'm also not going to switch them around because one, I don't have a ladder that can get up there because my ladder doesn't fit in between these fuse. So, so that's about all we can do for today, but hey, maybe we'll come back and I'll bring you all along with me. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps. If you didn't like this video, you can do a thumbs down. Hey, maybe let me know why. Um, kind of just taking you along on a call with me. So if you like what I do, I'll have a subscribe over there somewhere. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I'm getting pretty close to 100 at the time of this video. So hey, we're pretty close. And I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.